Today we will apply our knowledge of trigonometry to right triangles. Trigonometry has three common functions that can be applied to right triangles. They are sine theta. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Or if we look at a triangle in this example, it's y over h or 6 over 10. We then have cosine theta, which is adjacent over or a hypotenuse, or x over h, which is the same as 8 over 10. Then finally we have tan theta. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent, or y over x, or we can write it as 6 over 8. We can solve for a missing side of a right triangle by using Pythagorean's theorem. We can use Pythagorean's theorem when we know two sides of the right triangle. Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If we're trying to solve for c, we can take the square root of a squared plus b squared. We can solve for the missing side of the right triangle we see on the right by using Pythagorean's theorem. If we write Pythagorean's theorem, we have a squared, which is 6 in this case, plus b squared, which we're trying to find, and our hypotenuse, which is c squared, which is a squared. If we square both sides, we'll get 36 plus b squared equals 64. If we get b by itself, we can subtract 36 from both sides, and we'll get b squared equals 28. To get b by itself, we can square both sides, we have a final answer of b is equal to the square root of 28 or 2 times the square root of 7. So we know that b equals 2 times the square root of 7. Instead of using Pythagorean's theorem, we can use the trig functions to solve for a missing side when we know one side length and one angle of a right triangle. Our example says, find the side opposite of angle 67 degrees. So we're trying to solve for x. So we know that tangent 67 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So our opposite in this case is x. And adjacent to our angle is 14. Now if we multiply both sides by 14, we can solve for x. When we do so, we'll get 14 times tangent times 67 degrees will give us the base of the triangle. And when we calculate this out, we see that x approximately equals 33. So in the prior example, we found the missing side of a right triangle. Now we could find the missing angle of a right triangle. Once again, we can use our trig functions. Since we have, we know our opposite and our hypotenuse, we can use sine theta equals 8 over 10. Now we're trying to solve for theta, so if we divide each side by sine, we'll get theta by itself, which will equal the inverse of sine times 8 over 10. When we multiply this out, we'll see that theta equals 53.1 degrees. When a right triangle is placed in a coordinate plane, the placement of the right triangle affects the sign of our trigonometry functions. So let's look at each coordinate individually. In coordinate 1, all functions are positive. In coordinate 2, we see that sine is a positive function while cosine and tangent are negative. And theta, to find theta, we would have to take 180 minus theta to get our angle. In coordinate 3, the only positive function is tangent while sine and cosine are negative. And then finally in quadrant 4, cosine is positive while sine and tangent are negative. If we look at our example below, we see that we have a right triangle in the second quadrant. And the problem here says that they want us to find the height and base of a triangle that is 135 degrees in the counterclockwise direction from the origin, where R 
or the radius is 15 meters long. So if we label a triangle, R is our radius, so which can also be said as our hypotenuse, and we're trying to find the height and the base of the triangle. So we know one side, and we can find our theta by taking 180 minus 135 degrees to get 45 degrees. So our angle inside our tri triangle is 45 degrees. And now we can solve for height and base by using some of our trig functions. So if we try to solve for h, we can see that h is opposite or hypotenuse. So we can use sine 45 is equal to h over 15. Get h by itself, we can multiply each side by 15, which will give us 15 times sine times 45 degrees will equal h. And if we multiply this out, we will see that h is equal to 10.6 meters. Now that we know the height, now we can solve for the base. We see that the base is adjacent to our angle, and we know the hypotenuse. So if we use cosine, we will see that cosine 45 is equal to our base over our hypotenuse. If we try to get b by itself, we'll see that 15 times cosine times 45 degrees is equal to b. And b, when we multiply this out, will be equal to 10.6. However, we need to remember that since we took cosine and our right triangle is in the second quadrant, cosine is negative, so our base will be negative 10.6 meters. For this problem, we're going to use our knowledge of trigonometry and apply it to a real world problem. And the problem we have, it says, a water tower is located 325 feet from a building. From a window in the building, an observer notes that the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is 39 degrees and that the angle of depression to the bottom of the tower is 25 degrees. How tall is the tower and how high is the window? So if we look in the figure below, we'll see that we know our base, we know our two angles, and we can see that our two angles form two right triangles, and that the base is the same for each triangle. So we're going to try to solve for h1, which will give us the height of the window, and then we can solve for h2, which will give us the height from the window to the top of the tower. So first, let's try to solve for h1. In h1, we see our angle is 25 degrees, and that our base of the triangle is 325 feet. So we can take so we can take tangent, knowing that tangent is opposite over adjacent, and that our angle is 25 degrees. So we have h1, which is opposite of the angle, and then adjacent, which is our base, which is 325 feet. We can solve for h1 by multiplying each side by 325. And when we do so, we'll get 325 times tangent times 25 degrees will equal h1. If we multiply this out, we'll see that h1 is approximately 151 and a half feet. So we see that h1 is the same height as the window. So the height of our window is 151 and a half feet. Now if we solve from the height of the window to the top of the tower, we can get h2. So once again, we're trying to find opposite over adjacent, so we can use tangent. But our angle for this triangle is 39 degrees, and we'll have h2 over 325. If we multiply both sides by 325 to get h2 by itself, we'll get 325 times tangent times 39 degrees is equal to h2. When we multiply this through, we'll see that h2 is equal to 263. Now that we know h2 and h1, we can add h1 and h2 together 
to find the overall height of the tower. So if we add if we add h1 plus h2, we'll get the total height of the tower, which is 151.5 plus 263 feet will give us 414 and a half feet.